My name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. So today I was going to be uh, working on the fenders for my new trailer, but uh, even I'm not crazy enough to work out in this uh, kind of weather. Some heavy wet snow. So I think today is a good day to spend some time in the shop cleaning things up, getting a little more organized because I'm going to be back in the shop soon making uh, woodworking projects once again and uh, it's a bit of a disaster in there. So today it's uh, shop cleaning and organization day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the timing on the snow is pretty good because I just picked up this toolbox yesterday and it's going to allow me to organize things here in the shop like I've never been able to before. <laughs> I have so many things that don't really have a good place because this is primarily a woodworking shop and I don't have a whole lot of like drawers or cupboards or places to put smaller things. So I have a lot of stuff floating around the shop that really should be floating around the shop and need an actual home. So a roller cab like this is going to be a good solution for that. So I thought for this video we'd talk a little bit about what led me to uh, getting a roller cab, a mechanics tool chest here in the shop, why I ended up getting one of this size, why I ended up getting this particular cabinet, and uh, we'll clean it up a little bit because it is used, and we'll talk a little bit about all the things that are going to go in here. We'll get it loaded up, and this shop is hopefully going to look better than it ever has before. That's at least my plan right now. Let's have some fun. Let's clean and organize the shop. So I originally started down this path because of the bridge port. Uh, this thing ends up having so many little accessories and things that you just keep adding on to it that you just need places to store. So like I have, you know, you have parallel sets, you have tooling, you have end mills, you have different cutters, uh, you know, you have measuring and layout tools and all that stuff. And those things just kind of float around and I wanted something to put all this stuff into. So I thought, well, I have some space here. I could get a smaller, you know, like a 30 or 36 inch uh, cabinet and put that here and I have a little work surface on top that I could slide the vise or the rotary table onto and I could have some drawers for all the, the tooling and things. And then I got me thinking too, well, I'm like, well, I have all these other tools as well that need somewhere to go. And that's becoming a lot more evident as I was working in the driveway, building the trailer because I was using all those kinds of tools and then I'm like, well, I have all this fabrication and welding stuff too that needs somewhere to go. So I just thought, well, okay, maybe a cabin over here someday would be nice, but I really have a bigger problem, which is all of the other stuff. All of the like mechanics tools, the DIY carpentry tools, the welding stuff, all the supplies for the welders and all that stuff. That all needs somewhere to go, and I need it to have somewhere to go very desperately. <laughs> So I settled on a 54 inch roller cabinet. I figured that would give me the most amount of space without being too overly ridiculously sized for my shop. This is still pretty big to be in here. This is a 400 square foot shop and I do have this, this shop pretty well packed. But it does nest in here nicely uh, in front of the metal bandsaw and kind of nesting into the dust collector area. So I still have a lot of room here to get around the end of the jointer, get at the shelves over here, which are gonna be changing because I have this now. <laughs> and I still have room to get in with this uh, door up so I can get in and out of the shop and get to my things. Being right by the door as well is nice because if I'm working in the driveway on something that I'm gonna use this kind of tool stuff for, um, I'm right here. So it's kind of a nice spot to be able to get in and out of here. And I was playing around with two different kind of arrangements for this cabinet, either having it like this, kind of parallel to the door, or having it be perpendicular to the door with the, the saw over here and the drawers kind of coming towards the jointer. But I'm kind of, I like this a lot because I have all this open space here to be able to get into the drawers without being too confined. So I think this actually worked out a lot nicer than I had originally anticipated. So this is a used box, so it's got a little bit of grime and dirt going on here there's you know some fine like sand and junk in the drawers so I think before I put this thing into service I'm going to do a, a little bit of a cleaning on it I'm going to pull all the drawers out vacuum them all out give them a good wipe down and get all the drawers out of here that way I can clean the inside of the cabin as well and just sort of clean things up uh, in general and while I'm doing that we can talk a little bit about why I ended up with a, uh, a snap-on box and not something that is uh, let's say cheaper. So I started my search about a month ago. I went to the stores and you know, you take a look at them in person, you pull the drawers out, see how they all felt. And 
To me, at least, everything feels a little too cheap. It's a little too light gauge, and although things kind of operate really nicely on a lot of them, they just felt too light. Now, that is because I am personally been a little bit spoiled in my life. My dad worked at Snap-on for 18 years, so all through my childhood, and he had Snap-on boxes at home. So the boxes that I'm used to actually using and touching and operating are snap-on boxes, the higher-end, heavy-built boxes. So because of that, now everything that does exactly the same thing as this does, holds tools just fine, uh, is feel too cheap for me. <laughs> so I have that going for me. The other thing for me is it just feels a little more uh, nostalgic because all through my childhood, uh, whenever my dad would ask me to go get something, a screwdriver or a socket or a wrench or whatever, it would be one of these boxes that I'd be going to. I'd be using the same kind of handhold latch system, unlocking the box and getting the tools out of it. So there is a little bit of that there as well, that emotional connection to it. But uh, overall, I just really like having a really heavy overbuilt box that I don't have to worry about if I'm going to damage it. One of the funny stories that my dad told me when I was a kid that I didn't really quite understand until I became an adult as he was telling me that these boxes were designed and engineered so that guys could throw their tools across the shop into the drawer of their toolbox and at the time I was thinking like why would anybody want to throw their tools across the shop well only when I became an adult did I realized that guys weren't just throwing their tools across the shop to conveniently and efficiently put their tools away if they're throwing their tools across the shop they're having a bad day <laughs> and tossing their tools across the shop into a box is a little bit of uh, anger management. <laughs> and this is why I wanted to pull everything out because uh, I figured it was like that in here. And uh, the slides are furry. Probably shouldn't be furry. Oh look, free stuff. So when I was shopping, one of the things I did was I went to Harbor Freight to check out their US General Series 2, which are pretty well regarded. That it's a decent box, but it's not like this. It's not built that heavy. Uh, Harper Freight just came out with their Icon line of stuff. This is a lot more comparable to this, this box. It's much heavier built, and it just feels a lot more solid. That's the kind of thing that I really care about. So I was actually going to buy this box here. The was a 56-inch Icon. It's four grand, and they have a coupon. But it also says in here, compare to Snap-on Master Series, the KRL 722 for almost seven grand. Uh, that KRL 722 is what this box is. So for those that are curious, here is the box that I got, and that is how much it would be brand new from Snap-on. So that got me thinking about looking for a used box that might be a little bit cheaper or about the same price as that one. And I wasn't too keen on buying a used like sub thousand dollar box because those are a little bit easier to damage. But something this big, I feel more comfortable buying used. So this is the Snap-on Master Series. That's the KRL. They have, I think, three different product lines for boxes. They have the KRA, which is the classic, which is like the, I guess, their entry entry level, which is nowhere near entry level pricing. <laughs> they have their mid-range, which is this, the Master Series, and they have their uh, uh, Epic line as well, which is the next step up from here. So as I went out and started looking for this box, in particular the 54-inch uh, Masters, the prices uh, are usually like from anywhere from 2500 to about 4000 for a used box like this one. It really just depends on like how old it is, how desperate the person is to sell it, and things like that. So I went ahead and I went to go look at this box because it was actually cheaper than the other ones. It was only 2000 It didn't look like it was as good a shape, which wasn't too concerned to me. I don't need it to be perfect showroom, off-the-truck quality looking. I just need it to be uh, durable and functional, so the blemishes and things that we'll look at in a little bit don't really bother me. Uh, and it was the color that I wanted. All the other ones that were uh, better, better condition and more money were colors I didn't really want. I wanted a red box because I like red. So there's that. So 2000 for this guy needs a little bit of uh, cleanup. And uh, it's not as pretty as a brand new box. But I just need something that I can throw tools in 
and I don't have to worry about it breaking and I feel really good opening the drawer every time I open it. <laughs> so I'm going to keep on going through with the cleaning process. I'm going to vacuum out the inside of the cabinet and uh, the slides are obviously lubricated and that lube has attracted a lot of uh, dust and other crap on there. So I'm going to see if I can get off with some light general purpose cleaner and as I get the inside of the box all cleaned up I can start cleaning up all of the individual drawers and getting them back into their respective openings. Now one thing you might not know if you're not familiar with these boxes is that they are reconfigurable so all the drawers in their respective widths can be configured to whatever uh, I guess particular pattern you want so they're usually set up graduated from the narrowest drawers on the top to the deepest drawers on the bottom but for whatever reason if you wanted to change that around and have a uh, a shallow drawer on the bottom and your deep drawer on top or the deep drawer in the middle or something you can do that because the spacing is all consistent with all the slides. I like graduated so I'm going to leave it kind of the stock configuration but uh, it's just kind of nice to keep that in the back of your mind that if you want to change up the configuration you can totally just do that. As I'm putting these in, I thought I'd also point out something that might be obvious is that since this is modular, on any deeper drawer that you want, you could put multiple sliders on it. So if you want a double slide drawer, you could always uh, add an additional slide to that and you'd be all set. So now I can start cleaning up these drawers and getting those all nice. One thing I'm pretty excited and happy about is the stainless steel top on here. It's going to give me an actual, like, I don't know, let's call it a more industrial work surface to work on. So for dirty stuff or, I don't know, stuff like this, I'm thinking like working on a chainsaw or whatever, things that might be dirty, the stainless steel and a work surface will be great for that because it's really easy to clean up. And to make these easier to clean up, I'll also remove the slides from the drawers. It should give me a little more accessibility to clean up the sides.
So the drawers and the interiors are all cleaned and they look a heck of a lot better. I still have to wipe down the outside a little bit, but I'll do that in a little while. I thought next I'd give you a little bit of a closer look at the, uh, I guess the cosmetic condition of this thing. So starting with the stainless top, I guess this is the area that shows the most amount of actual wear. Uh, obviously since this is a work surface, so there's you know, a pretty good amount of little dings and I guess someone's trying to punch something out on here at some point. So you know there is a fair amount of wear on the top. It's not a really big issue for me. One thing I am kind of noticing with the top though, is it looks like this gap is a lot bigger than it would be from the factory. And looking in here, it looks like it's just some particle board that supports the stainless top. So I'm guessing, uh, due to some of the rust and stuff we're going to look at down there, that this was stored in a somewhat damp environment. So the particle board has probably swelled due to humidity and it's pushing that up. So I could take the top off and replace that piece of particle board or I could just leave it because it's not really affecting the functionality of the box. It just kind of looks a little bit off. So speaking of this area down here, I've got a little bit of paint chip and rust kind of forming down in this area. And then coming up to here, we have just some normal wear stuff. So there's a few little dents and divots in the trim pieces, in the, the front of the latches. And then this drawer here, it's got this uh, corner here smashed. Now, <laughs> yeah, I literally just did this. <laughs> so this one was me. So I, uh, a, little, a little slippery fingers moment when I was carrying this drawer and dropped that thing as I was cleaning it. But, uh, you know, since this is a used box and it's got some wear on it already, something like this, I can totally just shrug off. So the sides look like they're in pretty good shape aside from needing a cleaning. And you can see the particle board is, you know, in there. I don't know, I gotta look at some pictures. I think, I feel like that should be like no, no gap in here, but I don't know, I could be wrong. The lock works and sounds pretty darn good. So that's good. And the side here, that looks pretty much uh, flawless. So the box did come with the original little touch up paint. So I will probably do a little bit of that down here just to protect it from some rust. And I may try and bend uh, that out and put a little touch of paint on there as well. So after a decent amount of time spent cleaning this thing, it is now finally time to finally get stuff in here and get the shop a little more organized. I thought before I just start pulling stuff from every corner of the shop and dropping it into drawers, I do want to share a little bit about the current uh, storage uh, I'm not, I don't want to say system because it's not a system. Uh, <laughs> storage disaster of the things that are not woodworking related in my shop. So let's take a little walk around. So starting over here in this corner, I have all of my uh, angle grinder stuff. So I have, you know, flat discs and cutoff wheels. I can't tell you how many times I bought more cutoff wheels because I thought I was out of them when I really wasn't. And I've got another wheel down there. There's, an, there's the Arbor Tech. Where is it? Somewhere there it is. Uh, you know, angle grinder stuff. So that's one kind of category. Angle grinders and things that go on angle grinders. Then I also have welding stuff. So I have consumables like welding rods, welding wire, some more rods up there, and uh, you know, tips, uh, these things for the MIG welder, and uh, all that kind of stuff. I also have uh, air tools and like the tire filler thing, which I always lose too. Uh, that can go in the box as well. So coming back around this way, I'm going to skip the bridge port stuff. If I have room, I might temporarily put some of the stuff in the box just to get it out of the way. But this is kind of a lower priority for the organization at this point. So coming around here, I just finished putting the, uh, I guess, the axle brake assemblies on the trailer. So I have all the stuff that I use for that just piled up here on the assembly table. And in the assembly table is where I currently keep a lot of the tools that go in this box. So when I built this assembly table area, I kind of reserved a few drawers here for the type of tools that go in this box. So I have this drawer, which is supposed to be just wrenches. So I have a metric and imperial wrench set in there. And this drawer is supposed to contain like pliers and screwdrivers and other things that seem to have taken a walk over the years. And then the top drawer is for like 
pry bars and my torque wrench which is out because I use it to do the trailer. And the last large storage area is going to be this toolbox down here. My dad gave me this little box when I uh, went off to college and I had a house that I was renting and I was doing some repair stuff around the place. So I had somewhere to put my super basic tools like you know a hammer and a pry bar and a speed square and pliers or whatever. So I have you know, pipe wrenches, all the things that don't get used very often are all in this little box. So I'm looking forward to getting these things out of this box and getting this box out of this corner. So I think to make this easy, I'm going to work through things sort of categorically, bring over everything for that category, put it on top of the box, really just assess what I have so I know like what shape things are, how much stuff there is for that thing, and I can kind of pick out which drawer is going to work out best for that item or for that category. So I'm going to start with the ankle grinder stuff. I have all of the wheels and discs and attachments for those, as well as the grinders themselves. I have another two grinders that I've been using for the trailer build, which I've been leaving outside under a tarp for the last two and a half months, or uh, two months, or however long it's been. So I was kind of plan for those two to also be included in this uh, collection of stuff. And I ran outside and grabbed the other two grinders so I'd have them, at least for layout's sake. And here's a fun example of what usually happens to me. I couldn't find a wire wheel. So I went and bought another wire wheel, and then I couldn't find that one that I bought, and I bought another one over here. One thing I'm noticing though is the grinders are a lot different size than all the discs. So I think the grinders are going to a bigger drawer, and I use one of the, the, the skinny narrow drawers for all of the grinding pads and wheels and things. So the grinder stuff is one of the things that I'm the most excited about. So from here, I think I'm just going to go at it. I'm going to start going through different categories, pulling out a bunch of different tools of different things, and finding places to put them into the drawers and something very weirdly satisfying about this prospect of having all my stuff organized and having it all in one space is uh i don't know it seems really mundane and dumb that i'm excited to be organizing but <laughs> i am and i am happy to say that i am so I just went through and got all of the, I guess, the bigger stuff in here that's going to go in here. And I thought I'd show you kind of how things are laid out and how much space I still have. So on the top drawer, I have uh, cordless tools. I have a few other little things over there, but I have a lot more space here that I can still use for other stuff. The second drawer is my wrenches and uh, impact sockets and other little bits and things over there. Still some more space in there. Over here on this bank, I've got a pliers drawer, which is nice. This is like air tools and pipe wrenches and knives and my crimper. This is all the angle grinder stuff and some buffing compound there. And then down here I still have this whole drawer open. I figured I could use this to store uh, my welding hoods. Other welding hood. Welding gloves. And like my welding jacket could probably go in there too. I think it's a good use of that drawer. On this side, screwdrivers, or I guess like straight bladed things, still got a lot of space in here as well. This drawer is empty. This drawer is going to be carpentry type of stuff, masonry stuff. This is my welding drawer, so I've got my squares and my consumables in here. And this drawer is angle grinders, and I have this spot over here, which is just the right size for my socket set. So that can go down in there. So I'm oddly very excited about having everything here in one place. Now I do have a little bit of free space still in here. I'm going to leave that as is for now instead of trying to find things to cram in here because I'm sure there are things floating around like in the house or somewhere else in the shop that should go in here that I haven't found yet because I'm sure. <laughs> so as I've been doing this I've also been thinking about some uh, other kind of shop organization stuff and a few little bits of uh, things I want to clean up I guess in here. So let's take a quick walk around and uh, see what's going on because I also have some more uh, free space at the assembly table because it's not full of stuff that's now in here. So this wall with these shelves here is a little less cluttered than it was before. I built this sort of shelf wall thing uh, years ago as like a good way to get some stuff out of the way. Like this open shelf down here was originally just designed for my chainsaw, so it fits in here uh, horizontally. That was uh, before I 
did that too. So I don't know. I've just never been super happy with this, mostly because it just looks like a bunch of stuff sitting on the wall. So that probably will change at some point. Now back here on the bridge port, I think since I have the space now in that toolbox, I might just put some of the stuff in there just to get rid of it. Uh, like the parallel kits, like have all this extra tooling down there, which does need to be sitting out. So while I have the space in there, I think I'll move that stuff into the, uh, the one open skinny drawer there. Now over here, the, uh, well, I have all these sheet goods, which don't really need to be in here. That's the, one of the things I did a few years ago is I did that lumber purge thing. I used to have a big lumber rack back here full of stuff. So lumber doesn't really need to be in here because this is the actual workshop. It's not a storage room. So things like sheet goods and offcuts and things that I'm not using for the current project don't need to be in here. They're just cluttering up the space. So those can go into more of a storage environment, either out in the shed or in the basement of the house or something. They don't need to be in here cluttering things up. So like the stuff up there, that can definitely get out of here, but it's not really bothering me because it's up in the air. So I'm not too worried about that right now. But this, the sheet goods and stuff, those don't need to be out here. So I'm going to move those and probably get rid of some of that stuff. All right, so back here in this corner, this beam saw can go here for now, I guess. It's nice not having that toolbox there. It gives you a little more room as you're coming in the door. And speaking of coming in the door, I think, uh, well, this dehumidifier doesn't need to be in here right now since it's the middle of winter and it's not running. And I'm gonna get rid of these spice box cabinet box things, which I haven't finished yet either. Those are from like six years ago. They can go in the house or something. <laughs> they don't need to be out here uh, serving as a stand for my, uh, my tap cabinet. So now I have all this nice free space here at the assembly table, so I can put things in here that actually relate to assembly. So I have like these assembly corner clamp things which can go in here. I have these uh, band clamps which can go in here too. This makes a lot more sense as far as things that should be accessible here at the assembly table. So thinking of the shop as more of a working functional space instead of just a storage space has personally helped me a lot as I've been working on reorganizing things and making this space a lot more efficient for me. So like for instance, this form for making skateboards, I don't know when Lindsay's gonna wanna make another skateboard but this does not need to be in here because uh, we're not going to do it tomorrow or the next day or probably a month from now. <laughs> so these can go uh, in more of a storage place. I'm going to throw these in the attic. <laughs> so just a little more things to tidy up and put away and get out of here. And then I think this sort of phase of shop organization and cleaning is going to be over and I can get back to doing some actual work. So this box has been in here for a few weeks now and I am super happy that I did this and it's just working really nicely. So first off from an organization standpoint, it's just so nice to have all these little things all in one place. So if I need a welding thing, I know it's in that drawer. It's super easy to grab. The sort of side benefit that I didn't really think about at first was the added sort of workspace here. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna keep my miter saw on here, but I'm kind of playing around with the idea. Usually I have this thing on the floor because I only use it a few times a year, but uh, if it gets it off the floor, it might be a good uh, fit. The other really nice thing is that this gives me an auxiliary area for the workbench so I can roll this thing over and have some places to put uh, extra parts for the project that I'm working on or whatever. And I don't have to worry about blocking in the bandsaw either because I can roll this thing back and forth and I can have access to the bandsaw. So this actually uh, worked out really nicely. Like. A lot better than I thought, so I'm super just thrilled with a little bit of shop organization and a little bit more shop efficiency. So hope, uh, hope you enjoyed this organization and shop type project type of thing. I am again really super duper happy that this uh, kind of worked out this way. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on uh, the shop or anything in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working. <laughs>